If ever in modern times there was a moment for great democratic leaders to come to the fore, it is now, Simon Bridges writes in his unabridged column. Simon, you think we could do with another Winston Churchill? Yeah, I do, and maybe that's a bit glib, but what I'm really saying is, look, in the West, certainly in the Anglosphere and countries we sort of compare ourselves with, but I think actually across the, the democratic West, there is a real dearth, in fact, I define want to say, you know, here's a great leader who's coming up with big policies to the big problems we've got. And there's no doubt we've got lots of big problems. I mean, I list them off and I do in the column and they're just some of them, whether it's geopolitics, whether it's the economic environment, arguably some of the biggest in many decades, possibly even since World War II. Um, So, yeah, I raise the question, where are the great leaders um, who are prepared to put their head up above the parapet, whether it's in New Zealand, Australia, Canada, the UK, Europe, the US, um, and and bring forward the, the big policy solutions we need in relation to those big problems. Churchill undoubtedly uh, showed great leadership through his mm. career, uh, but his popularity ebbed and flowed throughout the mm. time. How much by saying we need more leaders like him is just glorifying history? Well, certainly, you know, in a way, and as I say, it is a bit glib, I'm not necessarily saying Churchill per se in as much as, look, there's cancel culture around him, all these things. But but the issue, I think, is actually if you look back, even a few years, and other leaders I've mentioned that I personally admire, like John uh, Howard, Shinzo Abe in uh, Japan, they were leaders who were prepared to put forward significant policy programs. She Tony Blair's another one I mentioned, whether you agree with everything they did or not, and see them through. Actually, as their popularity, as you say, did um, ebb and flow. They were prepared to stay with that agenda because they knew in the end um, it would get significant backing and it was what the country needed. I, I think in contrast, what we've seen in Australia, actually in the UK at a level, um, and different countries is this small target view of life where no one's putting forward big things. It's gently, gently, what is the focus groups say um, it's it's the vibe, it's the feel we want, but we're not going to go out there on something big because, oh, this interest group or this sector might not like it, and so we'll just you know tread very carefully. But that's not good enough in 2022. Mm. Now, you mention in your column uh, the example of the Australian Prime Minister, Albanese, winning the election by saying next to nothing. If the strategy is working for him, why would he change? Well, this is true. And that's, I suppose, the problem, right? Even though it does win you an election, and it's a an approach that um, Sir Keir Starmer, uh, the Labour leader in the United Kingdom, also seems to be following. And so Tony Blair's been having a go at him from the sidelines subtly around that. Um, Why would you change? But the reason for change is because actually your countrymen and women, um, it's a bit old fashioned, but the people of your electorate deserve it uh, at the moment with interest rates, inflation, uh, the Ukraine, and the issues between China and the US, uh, I think we deserve um, more than actually ideas, although ideas would be a start, we deserve positive, significant policy prescription. I'll give one other example, actually. In the UK, at the moment, they're going through a leadership contest, obviously, for, for the leader of the Conservative Party, but more than that, for the Prime Minister. I mean, the bits and pieces I read tend to indicate both the uh, challenges for that are trying to be Margaret Thatcher. Well, she had a policy programme, but the reality of that is actually we need more than going back to the past. We need new ideas, programmes and intellectual ways of thinking about things and policies. Mm-hmm. Now, you paraphrase a Financial Times journalist who says politics these days is mainly about the vibes mm. and we're all getting tribally fiercer and fiercer about less and less. Mm. Can you give us a few examples of this? Um, well, I think you see it over the culture wars uh, generally with people very worked up over, you know, pronouns and various other bits and pieces and and all political sides can be guilty of that Um, it it often is that we're involved in the politics of the gesture Um, you know the the, the something or rather that means uh, something bigger to a a grouping or the like whilst in a sense Rome burns I mean if you take New Zealand big health problems 
big education problems with something like uh, uh, four out of ten kids not at school regularly, crime, economic issues. So we need more than that kind of gesture vibe politics around various cult- cultural and social issues. We need substantive, hard-headed um, ideas and policies. So what you're saying essentially is that leaders should be prepared to stick their head out sometimes, even if it means risking their popularity. And and putting forward an agenda that they see through. I think that's what we did see in the past. I think the defence to politicians is 24-7 media, social media, frankly more ignorance in the electorate because of social media rather than sort of hard-headed news. All of these things sort of going into the mix. Um, But you know, I, I suppose I'm sort of trying to make the points, you know what, nevertheless, when there's big problems, we do want and we do deserve big solutions. And I think in the end, uh, politicians who do that uh, will be rewarded by it at the ballot box. Simon, thank you very much for coming in. Welcome.